Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to Atlin, British Columbia, Canada. This little town is about two hours from Whitehorse and is just south of the province boundaries of British Columbia and the Yukon Territory. The elevation is a little over 2,200 feet in town, but climbs to over 6,200 feet on nearby mountain peaks. Nestled along its namesake lake, Atlin is surrounded by gently sloping hills covered in Douglas fir, Sitka spruce, and ponderosa pine stands, interrupted by big leaf maple and red alder. Animals here include whitetail and mule deer, mountain goats, bighorn sheep, Yukon moose, and a caribou here and there. The predators here include lynx, coyotes, cougars, wolves, black bears, and brown bears. On the evening of June 5, 2017, Rick Cowan and his girlfriend, whom we'll call Rita, were just sitting down to enjoy a glass of wine together. Rick had placed a small bag of trash just outside the front door, which he planned to put in the canister in a few minutes. They'd just finished spending a few hours relaxing while working in their garden. Rick was an avid outdoorsman and was used to seeing bears, even near his home. The week before this incident, he'd chased away a curious black bear, which left with no problems. Rick's home was on the outskirts of town, so he knew better than to leave garbage or food outside his home for a prolonged time period. Living in bear country was something he was just comfortable with, as long as the bears behaved predictably. As Rita sat on the couch, the family dog Snickers began barking outside the front door. Rita glanced through the front window, and at the end of the driveway she could see two large grizzly bears appear and slowly walk toward the house. Rita got Rick's attention and encouraged him to get the dog inside. Rick peered through the window to see two perfect representations of the grizzly bear species. Their guard hairs were tipped with a silver sheen, and their dished profile and hump of muscle on their shoulders made their identification undeniable. He also noticed that there was something unusual about the behavior of these bears. They weren't skittish about being near a house, and presented themselves boldly. Rick walked over to the front door and called Snickers, hoping his voice and sudden appearance might frighten the bears away. As soon as they heard his voice and saw him in the doorway, both bears dashed toward Rick in unison. Even though he was experienced with grizzlies, Rick was terrified. He opened the front door and let Snickers in and then slammed it shut when the bears were within five feet of entering the house. The grizzlies paused and examined the doorway, possibly unsure of where Rick had disappeared. On Rick's property was a guest cabin, and his teenage daughter, whom we'll call Jennifer, was hidden inside. Her dog, Pippin, was cowering outside the door to the cabin, hoping to be let in before the grizzlies noticed him. Rick watched the grizzlies through the windows and worked his way to an open one. He shouted to Jennifer to let Pippin into the cabin with her. Jennifer opened the door while the bears were only fifteen yards or so away. As soon as they saw the door open, they dashed in unison toward her in the same manner they had pursued Rick. Jennifer slammed the door after letting Pippin inside, and the bears were only three feet from entering. Now Rick had made a decision previously that he was seriously regretting. He had several hunting rifles, but had stored them in his father's gun safe and out of reach of his children. Grandpa's house was only a five-minute drive away, but it might as well have been a million miles. The only weapon he could find was a large kitchen knife, which granted him a modicum of confidence. Rick picked up the phone and dialed his father's number, hoping he would pick up quickly. Rick's father did pick up and couldn't believe the details he was listening to. I'm sure he thought it may have been some kind of prank, but as soon as he was reassured it wasn't, he grabbed his rifle and headed right over. Now Rick's father was a real bear hugger, if you will. He was probably the last person in town to want to hurt or kill a bear. As he drove over, his mind raced with the dire straits his family was now facing. While Rick waited for his father to arrive, he stood inside the front door and observed the grizzlies from only one foot away. The steel door would have been no match for the bears if they'd known to push on it, but it acted as a safety barrier for now. As he waited, he thought of Claudia Huber and Matthias Leniger. Only three years prior, they'd been besieged by a grizzly bear that chased them through their home and eventually attacked and killed Claudia. The details of their account is on this channel, and I've linked to it in the video article below for your review. The similarities are very eerie. Rick fought panic as his daughter was in the cabin and he was helpless to keep her safe. 
Despite his experience outdoors, he never imagined being held hostage in his own home by not just one, but two full-grown grizzly bears. Rick watched the grizzlies tearing into the garbage bag just outside the door when he heard the horn of his father's truck honking as he pulled up. For those of you impressed with the idea that loud noises could be used as a deterrent for bears, pay attention to the following details. Rick watched in dismay as the bears simply turned their heads and looked in Grandpa's direction. They didn't bolt as he'd hoped and walked towards the honking truck. Grandpa was still reluctant to kill the grizzlies. He poked his rifle from the window of his truck and fired a shot into the woodpile a few yards away from the bears. He hoped the loud noise would drive the bears off, but the grizzlies picked up their pace while they headed toward him. Now knowing that these bears were not afraid of anything they should be, he drew down on the closest bear and fired. His bullet struck the bear in the chest, and after only a few seconds, that bear died. The other grizzly looked at Grandpa for a second, then glanced back at the dead grizzly. It laid down next to its partner and sniffed the dead bear, between nervous mouthfuls of dandelions. After a minute or so, the uninjured bear slowly wandered off into the nearby forest. Relief filled the family as they emerged from the house and the cabin. Grandpa didn't want to shoot either of the grizzlies, let alone both of them, and expressed relief at the departure of the second bear. Police and local wildlife officers arrived soon and listened to the recounting of the incident. They looked around and informed Rick and his father that they would file a report indicating the shooting was a justifiable defense of home and property. They drove around the area and tried to locate the second grizzly. The officials left, but that doesn't mean the trouble with the other grizzly was over. After the officials left, Rick departed for his father's house to retrieve his rifles. Within twenty minutes, he had returned and began checking his firearms over to make sure they were operable and ready, just in case. As he looked over his rifles, Rick's children began screaming that the bear was back. He shuffled through the house and peered out of a window to locate the bear. He could see it only a few feet from the house, so he packed his rifle right out the front door. As Rick rounded the corner, the grizzly turned and looked straight at him. He began to walk toward him with no hesitation and demonstrated an aggressive presence. This time Rick was not terrified. He was putting an end to this torment for once and for all. He aimed at the grizzly's chest and fired. The bear retreated a few yards, staggered a little, then tipped over dead. Now having the final puzzle piece needed to finish their investigation, police and wildlife officers returned to gather information. Given how close the second grizzly carcass was to the Cowan's home, their investigation was remarkably brief. A second clear-cut case of self and property defense was their conclusion in this second grizzly killing as well. The grizzlies were very close to the same size and weighed around 350 pounds, indicating that they were young adults of around four years of age. As they chatted with Rick, the investigators noted that the two grizzlies' behavior was extremely dangerous, indicating that they've likely been habituated to people and may have been fed by a well-intending person or had found food in area garbage cans and bird feeders. The bears had boldly and aggressively charged people, despite barking dogs, human voices, a honking vehicle, and rifle shots. They should have fled to the shelter of the nearby woods, but stared and stalked toward what they could have only seen as their prey. I've had a similar experience with a large black bear in central Idaho. I will tell you that it is unnerving to have a bear staring at you from close range, but when they start coming toward you, you realize that they are not afraid of you, and may even tend to kill and eat you. Rick later stated that he was still baffled by the behavior of the grizzlies. He indicated the game officials believed the grizzlies were littermates who had never separated to find their own lives. They noted that the more aggressive and bolder grizzly seemed to energize its littermate. Rick expressed regret that both bears had to be killed and stated that the grizzlies' carcasses were given to the Taku River, Flingit First Nation. Portions of the grizzlies were likely consumed or utilized as ceremonial artifacts or incorporated into artwork. The mental lab is powered by the thoughts of possible scenarios that may have been played out if only a few things were changed. What if the family had remained in their garden a few more minutes instead of going inside their home? Is it realistic to think that the entire family may have been injured or killed and eaten? What would have happened if the grizzlies had entered the cabin sheltering Jennifer? Rick would have had to watch as his daughter was at the mercy of two aggressive grizzlies. How would you handle such a terrifying situation? I'll gladly read and reply to your thoughts, so please post them in the comments section below, and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. 
Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.